And now just ahead, Chef Mark's making those fish cakes in the Beko kitchen. To travel now, though, it's school holidays, so Debbie's been road testing one of the great Kiwi road trips with Sayat. Last week, she drove up the ancient Cody Trail in Northland. This week, she's going coast to coast. Take a look. The road linking the west to the eastern coast of Northland has arguably seen more New Zealand history than any other journey in the country. Today we're starting our road trip here in the stunning Hokianga Harbour. A quick trip down the road to Opanoni where the Hokianga Express is waiting to take us to those giant dunes. Pete gives instructions on the way. Hold on very tight to the board. Okay. Head up, mouth closed and away you go. Okay. This challenge is getting up the dunes. They're pretty steep. Okay. Oh my god, this is beautiful. Oh, oh they got really wet. <laughs> Didn't bring any other clothes. idea we'd be going in the water but it's so much fun you get up a bit of speed the water's there and you surf if you get it right you surf right along the top <laughs> just resigned to getting wet now that's it download a map from northland nz to follow te Ara coast to coast trail Next stop, Rawene. Lunch at the boat shed is whole flounder caught by a local fisherman. The cafe's deck overlooking the harbour. If you're heading north, you want to hop on the car ferry. That'll take you across the harbour to Kohu Kohu and it'll continue north up to Cape Rianga. But we're not going there today, we're continuing east. <laughs> Driving further around Te Hukianga Nui Akupe, take the time to visit Mangungu Mission House, the site of the largest signing of the Treaty of Waitangi. From there, Wairere Boulders Nature Park is just a K down the road. Well, 2.8 million years ago, <laughs> there was a massive volcanic eruption, which was probably the whole of the Kerikeri Keri Basin blowing its top. The remnants of that is now just Lake Omapuri, which is a crater lake, and that's 50 kilometres away, and the lava flew, came all the way here and sort of cooled down on our ridge line. And then over the next 2.8 million years, that basalt broke up into big chunks that slowly rolled down the hill. I haven't seen anything like this anywhere else in New Zealand. There's nothing like this anywhere else in the world. The geology of this area is actually world unique. Mind-boggling basalt boulders the size of buses and cars are strewn through the valley. This hidden gem has been eons in the making. It's hard to sort of get your head around because it's such big bits of time, you know, 2.8 yes. million years, you can't really... Yes think that, can yeah. you? You know, you can't really think how slowly things must have happened in order to cause that. They reckon that to cause the erosions, an, an individual drip would have to drip on an individual part of rock for a thousand years to do anything. So that, could, again, it's, a, it's sort of those unique things. That could only happen because the cowrie lives so long. Because a lot of trees don't live more than a thousand years, but of course cowrie can live thousands and thousands of years to allow that continual drip in the same place to cause an erosion. A quick stop at Kawakawa before exchanging black basalt for white limestone. So the cave here is an estimated 20 million years old. Uh, the foundation of this cave is made of sandstone, which is a softer stone. Uh, the river that flows through this cave would have carved out uh, the cave that we're standing under today. And over time, limestone's grown over it. We ventured 200 metres into the hillside, learning about the area's history and its smallest inhabitants. We're going to turn our lights off and we'll see some magic. You might be able to notice that they're actually quite evenly spaced apart, yeah? And that's because the glowworms are very territorial. By territorial, I mean they don't like each other. Not one bit. If they get too close to each other, get too annoyed with each other, they'll fight, they'll bite, and the loser would be eaten. A truly magical end to our Northland road trip. Okay, Google, take me home. 
navigating to home. <laughs> travel team road tripped around Northland in the Sayat Ateka. It has a five star safety rating like all Sayats adaptive cruise and loads of cool features like a virtual pedal to open the boot hands free, an eight inch screen that hooks up to your phone and 360 degree bird's eye camera. That's amazing. You can check out the Sayat website for all information and what a cool trip she looked like she had as well.